Hey everyone, it's Pepper, and this is Watercolors with Pepper. Thank you for returning uh, this week, if you saw me last week. If not, if this is your first time, thank you very much for watching the video. Anyways, uh, this week I did a prompt. Um, I did the selected three uh, colors from my own handmade watercolor paints that uh, were provided, and I gave a list and like whole situation from you know when I first started this um, it was egg yolk I believe yeah egg yolk uh, Verona green earth and mmm khakis yeah my color that I call um khakis yep all right well get to see on what I drew uh, and I believe the prompt was Krampus so I did miss Krampus let's get started Alrighty, so I already swatched the colors off camera. Um, I kind of did a little things Little things here and there a bit differently uh, Starting with the fact that I did it in blue pencil because I kind of wanted the sketching process to kind of show that I was actually sketching on the pages um, The one thing that I I like about these trio of colors that I didn't realize that like, I thought it was going to be very dull and boring for me so I basically kind of finagled and I just realized I just had to use this, the three watercolors. I had never said anything to myself about not using different color inks. And that's what I actually ended up doing. I did bring in a, a crimson ink that's waterproof from Bombay, Dr. Martin's Bombay Crimson Ink. Um, again, this ink, if I do sell this, I have to make sure I UV spray so that it retains the color um, just in case anything should happen and this is me testing out the paints in the situation that it would be in uh, my first initial one was basically not something i wanted to do uh, after i had started it but then once i began everything i kind of liked it uh, i did have to go back and actually look at miss krampus on my phone so uh yeah Kind of had to do. Anyways, uh, so for those of you that don't know, um, uh, Krampus is essentially the anti Santa Claus, I guess. Um, and I've drawn him. I've drawn him in past, and I've never drawn a Miss Krampus. And Miss Krampus came a little bit later than regular Krampus, I believe. Uh, I can't remember the exact date, but. Uh, essentially, she supposedly punishes bad men, specifically. Not children, but bad men. So, um, that's from my research. If I'm wrong, you know, leave me a comment. I'm totally okay with being said that that is incorrect. But, you know what? I really, you know, I really just had fun because I wanted Miss Krampus to kind of be front and center. And, hey, it doesn't matter if male or female if she wants to um if she wants to dominate someone she can so uh anyways uh just like the regular carampus she has reeds and she does have chains for whipping and um she does have a basket where she puts men in and stuff like that so that's pretty much all the identical stuff that she shares with krampus uh except for certain things uh she still has horns but she doesn't have devil like features for a lot of the renditions that i saw um for my purposes i always envisioned her basically a little bit more gentler and a little bit more how should i say cleaner uh in presentation than the regular krampus um i just think that you know she has more of a feminine, softer edge versus the, you know, if you've ever seen the pictures of Krampus. And and, I, and when I was going through the old art, she had, like, a ton of, like, these nice evening gowns, especially, like, 1920s uh, style apparel. Um, so I kind of wanted to do that with the hair, but I didn't want to do that necessarily with the garments. I kind of wanted to... I don't know, just play around with it. I still want to give her cloven hooves and like more like a satyr bottom, but um, you know, that's neither here nor there. Um, some people actually had that as um, Miss Krampus too. So it's, you know, again, it's up to interpretation. It's a female form of Krampus. And I think people will 
take it for what it is. Um, that's what you need to do. Uh, that's about it. Anyways, um, I'm starting the inking process now in this video. So if you didn't realize, like I kind of, originally I was actually gonna have her dragging the male Krampus who had taken a bunch of children and had a line of children, but I decided to go against that and do basically her basket full of gentlemen that were bad and um, her having her chains and her, you know, her reeds or whatever she beats them with. Um, and she has uh, two grown men in chains and bound in type of handcuff things, which, you know, um, like you do. <laughs> uh, I really did enjoy this one. Um, but like, as I said before, like I decided to do more than just one ink. So for this, like I started out with um, the uh, zebra brush uh, brush that I have. Um, this one, I believe it says it's not waterproof. However, I've been using it for quite some time, uh, the brand actually. And I can just say without a doubt that if you let it dry long enough, it does not actually uh, allow it to be hindered by the watercolor. So, and that's like one thing I wanna mention is like inking, like when, if you wanna ink before watercoloring, some people ink before, some ink after. Um, I ink before and if I really need to ink after, it's just to go over the same lines. Uh, some people think that extra step at the end is kind of s silly, so they'll, they'll do everything and then they'll ink after so that they don't mess up. But like in my terms, every single time I've done that, I've always made a mistake. <laughs> And I've had to redo the entire thing and um, because I got like a big old ink blob where I didn't want it. Uh, <laughs> yeah, so that's my, that's like my little, you know, yeah, don't do this if you're not comfortable with it type stance. But also don't do this if you think that you're going to mess up. And that's what I have experienced in the past and I don't want to continue that process. So... Um, I just wait a little bit longer so that I can make sure that the, uh, all of the ink is dry. Uh, I did do that with this one and I did like the fact that I had two men being pulled on chains and the fact that I did actually decide to do the, the painting after I did the inking for part of it, it kind of made sense because it did take a little bit of the black, tone it down a bit. But this is where I took the Crimson, uh, Bombay Crimson uh, ink that is waterproof. It is said that it's waterproof and just kind of highlighted a few things here and there. One on each person, um, her lips, uh, right above her eyebrows, uh, so not eyebrows, eyelids. I am getting tired in the day, you can tell that. Um, and this is where I did the egg yolk wash of paint. Uh, egg yolk is my alternative to uh, cro uh, was it cobalt yellow. Uh, it was suggested to me by a person who actually uses the, the same pigment itself uh, to me for my own handmade watercolor paints. I initially was going to uh, not sell it and just keep it like to myself, um, but I put it in my first set because I really, really, really like this yellow. Um, there's a lot of yellows that I don't like, but this one, it, it, it definitely, yeah. Uh, um Khakis is the next one that I did. It is a, like a lighter brown color. It's actually mixed with, uh, uh, purple ochre and, uh, I'm gonna say a purple ochre, um, a PR101, and a Arminian purple ochre is what, no, I just said that. <laughs> okay, anyways, oh, ultramarine violet, purple ochre, and PR101, um, in a PR101, yeah. No, PY101, yes, PY101. Um, and I really like it. It actually is, uh, it by it on its own, it really does look like a dark color khaki or a light color, depending on the wash that you do. Um, sorry for the rambling a little bit, but I just wanted to make sure that I was doing um, 
remembering everything correctly because it's been a while since I've talked about uh, my paints and uh, these are handmade watercolor paints that I do and I want to make sure that I'm describing them properly so that you have an understanding of where I'm coming from. Anyways, um, so the Verona Green Earth comes out very light. I do want to say that every single time I've seen a version of this in a commercial brand, uh, like, it, it always seems much different than the handmade. Like, I'm not sure how to describe it, but handmade watercolor paints, uh, for a lot of people, I don't know if how many of you out there actually experiment with them, but you know, they come out somewhat a little bit different and more unique and I like on how they wash and how they lay down on the paper. Verona Green Earth is one of those ones that I kind of have to stretch my limit of my imagination and you do have to work with it a little bit on a different scale than normal. Um, but I mix all three together to create all the shadows in the picture and that's what I'm doing right now to kind of finish out and round out everything. But at the same time, I do like on how this image came out. I like that it was muted colors for the center. The only bright color was the, in fact, um, the egg yolk. And this is adding highlights. And the, me signing in. Yeah. So as I was explaining, and I was a little bit rambling, I don't know. But anyways, if you like my explanation, that's fine. If you have more information about Miss Krampus, please leave a comment below. And this is the final image right here, and I posted it on my Instagram if you want to go over and see it there. Uh, I do want to say that I did go back in and actually add a, like a white highlight right here to kind of better differentiate her and the gentleman behind her, along with her basket people. Um... I do like like this, so, uh, you know, any information that you want to provide me, that's fine, I'll do that, but uh, thank you very much, and if you want to see more, like and subscribe, and also hit the little bell if you want to be notified when you I upload a video, alright? Thank you again, have a great day, or night, whenever you're watching this.